And I'm at Yargul. Yara, Yara Ghoul. Yara Ghoul, I don't know how to say it, but we're here, we're at this place here. Um, and this episode, I'm not sure, to be honest, because there are, there are, hmm, it's awkward here, because uh, there's actually like a long, there's a very long phase between here and the next uh, actual boss. There's a lot to go through here, so what I might try my best to do is, um, I'll see if I can just kind of cut through everything. The problem is, I've always had trouble here. Always. Every time. Every bloody time. Trouble here. Oh, fuck! And that was because I tried to rush. That, that's not usually the trouble I have, that's just because I tried to rush. In fact, I know what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to fight those guys. I just wasted my fucking time. They can chase me as much as they want. I'm going straight to the bell ringing lady. I'm just going to kill her because the, the rest of them are just like, they're just in the way. You know, they're just in the way. They're just the wrapping around the donut and I don't need them there. And I don't need to waste time, you know, eating the wrapping because it's not edible. Right, bye. Bye. Hello. Hello, hello. Bye. 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 Okay, I'm going to find this lady now. Where is she? There she is. So I'm going straight to her. I'll get on with this. Boom! There we go. Sorted. Excellent. Excellent. Alright, sweet. Done. So I, there, there's... Um, <laughs> I, I did an episode last week, I remember, where I was talking about how much I hate it when people start their sentences with so. And I've done it on this episode, and the last fucking episode. And it, it, I'm, I'm really, really... I'm, I'm so aware of it that it, it does actually annoy me when I do it. So I'm like, Dan, you made a promise to yourself and your friends and everyone around you and you're just letting them down. I need to go to rehab and get this so problem sorted out. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I went to see my friends over the weekend and we, we kind of caught up. We hadn't seen each other for about two and a half years. Um, so long that um, I think both myself and Anya have both managed to get pretty much all of our tattoos in that time. Um, they've also now, they're also now expecting, which is really good news, it's great news. And, you know, they've been bought a house and progress has been made, basically. Um, and it turns out, it turns out, I've had a bit of a shit uh, last 11 months. I think I shared that uh, in one of my episodes about, you know, my job and how I'm happy in restaurants. Da, 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 da. And it turns out that my friend, he's a very close friend of mine, we bond on many, many, many things. Many, many, many things. It turns out he's gone through exactly the same thing. And what we came to realize was that um, people who call themselves entrepreneurs are probably the, the least trustworthy and reliable people on this planet. Reason being uh, is because the whole idea of entrepreneurship is, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, without any question or any pretense, is just earning money. Um, well, I say earning money, it's getting money, because that's actually more what they do. There's no earning involved in what they do. Um, and this is actually, this all feeds into actually why I had this um, preconception. And it is still a, a generalization, I'm not going to lie. It's still a, a kind of, uh, a, general, a generalized judgment I make um, people like this. But it's unfortunate because for me it's been enforced, and or reinforced, sorry. And it, that's not something I want because I don't, I don't want to generalize for one. I don't want to be the person who does generalize as much as, um, you know, it's, it's, it's healthier for me to have well-rounded views and opinions on things. Um, right, okay, let's hang on. I've got to focus for a second here because this guy's going to be trouble. He's going to cause me trouble. There we go. Can we kill him straight away? I think we can. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, like having, I like having my opinion changed because it, it was changed recently by another friend of mine. We were having a chat about, um, you know, viewpoints on the world and stuff. And he made a very, very, very good point about how and why my viewpoint was actually incorrect. And I, it was great because I was like, oh, fantastic. So now I have something else to work on. I don't just fester over this one opinion I have that really could well be wrong, which it turns out it actually there was good reasons as to why it was. Um, and you know, it helped, it helped me feel that little bit more kind of well-rounded as a person because I had a different perspective, I now had two perspectives on the same matter um, which I did feel better at, I love how you know, flex on the matter anyway, sorry, so yes uh, over the last year I've worked with two guys who, uh, who I think 
would safely you want to call themselves one would probably more call themselves a businessman which he did i've been a businessman for 10 years the other guy called himself an entrepreneur um, although I think the more accurate description of both of them was uh, one was a, a short con artist and the other one was a long con artist because uh, the first one um, put on the contract uh, that I signed and I signed it because I, I needed a job I was unemployed and it was a job that I thought um, excuse me a job I thought I could do and a job well no a job I knew I could do actually and a job that I wanted to do so I kind of was like, yeah, whatever, sure. He put in the contract that if, I, if my contract was terminated within 12 months, even though the contract itself was for six months, for whatever reason, then um, I would have to reimburse him for said uh, money that he paid the agency to hire me. Now it turns out that he paid the agency £2,835 to, uh, to hire me. So basically, even though my contract was for six months, if I had been fired or left within that time frame, I would have had to have paid him £2,835. The thing is, that's fucking illegal, and it doesn't matter that it was in my contract, because it's fucking illegal. And so I had no obligation to pay him a penny, which I didn't. But what that meant was, uh, he made me work for him for like two months doing a load of bullshit, um, that had nothing to do with my job whatsoever, to be perfectly honest, and then fired me over the premise that I wasn't working hard enough. So I was, I was really annoyed, very annoyed. And looking back, I wish I hadn't cowered my tail between my legs in the way that I did, um, because it was, it was, it was difficult news to take, to be perfectly honest. It was difficult for me to kind of swallow the news. So, um, so I, I did kind of cower on it. I didn't. I just kind of let him take the piss out of me, which again has really pissed me off. Um, but I, I'm now kind of going through the correct motions and I'm putting claims through and stuff like that. So that's one guy. I was like, okay, fine, we'll try it. We'll start again and we'll, we'll try this another time and see what happens. So I go for another company, a guy who calls himself an entrepreneur. And they were really cool and everything seemed great and they were really, you know, they seemed really nice and friendly and innocent and they were all good people, very supportive and da da da. And then what I learned was that this guy was, um, for lack of any better term, genuine, genuine, like pure long con artist. To the point where, uh, right now, he's actually being hunted for fraud, theft, and I think tax evasion as well. Right now. Um, and, and it turns out that my friend has actually, not earlier in the year, gone through a very similar thing. Where the person that they worked for um, was a massive just fraudster, complete and utter fraudster. Worst off, actually, in their scenario, my, the guy I work for just works for a company that he set up that was all kind of based around the public and stuff like that. Like, um, let's say, commercial uh, industry, if you like. Um, whereas the, my friend worked for someone in the, in the public, ser public service, what would it be? She was an MP, basically. And uh, it turns out that she uh, she basically robbed she robbed people's taxpayers' money. She literally just outright out and out robbed it. She she thieved from you, me, and everyone else, and didn't think of anything of it. Literally didn't it didn't even just disappeared. Um, she's now apparently uh, apparently the story is she's now in America uh, because you know well she wants to get away. She, she's escaped. But she was taking tens of thousands of pounds uh, of taxpayers' money that was supposed to be obviously put and invested into the community, um, and uh, and just literally done a, done a runner. And he could see everything she was doing wrong, and a partner could see everything she was doing wrong. Um, but whistleblowing does nothing because you know there's there's the cliqueiness unfortunately involved in it all. Oh no, you don't, sunshine. Come the fuck here. No, 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 fucking mine. Thank you. Um, yeah, because of the protection that they had around them and stuff like that. It was the same with my boss. Like, he was very good, basically, at making sure that if anyone tried to get him for anything, he was covered. For example, he got very, very, very chummy with trading standards. So if anyone were to complain to trading standards, it turned out that they'd put the policy in place for him to operate, even though the way he operated was highly, highly unethical. Um, but because uh, Trading Standards wrote the policies and stuff, he was untouchable. He couldn't, he could, they couldn't do anything. Now that he's kind of disappeared with uh, thousands of pounds of people's money, 
um, claiming claiming on the, at the same time that it's not him who has the money. It's people like me, apparently. Apparently, I have the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, that basically, uh, he's he's got to the point now where he, he's had to hide. He's gone into hiding, and we can't find him anywhere. But there's a witch hunt out for him. Um, that's the pitchforks and torches uh, going out for him to get brought down. Um, and it all goes back to the time when I, I didn't base, basically I didn't like suits. I didn't like them. Because to me they represented the idea that if you don't have money, you are of no worth. Um, and, and obviously I guess that fits in with the fact that I worked in restaurants, right? And, uh, and you know, it didn't, it didn't couple up well for me. Because um, I worked in restaurants and I felt inferior and blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. So I didn't. I basically didn't like suits. I didn't like them. I didn't. I didn't want to be a suit. I didn't want to wear a suit. I didn't want to have anything to do with that culture. Anything to do with that area of things was of completely no interest to me because I just felt like it fed into this whole system that had no, basically had no humanity in, at heart. It didn't give a fuck. And these people genuinely didn't. They did not give a fuck. They were basically like, I want to get paid, and. What was funny was, I, it was it was almost caricatured for me because you all you hear about these bad guys in like you know films and stuff, but you never actually believe that they like actually exist. You just you don't realise that these people really don't give a shit about others. They they basically are like as long as I get paid, then I don't care. At which my boss actually said this um, a couple of times in regards to. Um, people not getting refunds, for example, and stuff like that. Like, he literally didn't give a shit, and that worried me a lot. Um, but again, I was in a position where I was so kind of desperate for work, and I didn't want to be unemployed again, that I, I kind of was like, okay, I, 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 had to, I had to kind of justify it in my own head, which was awful. I hated it, because it made me sacrifice my own morals um, to, to work for this guy that I, I didn't like, and I actually didn't trust either. I mean, he, he actually missed paychecks at times. He, he genuinely didn't pay anyone, and we had to all chase him for our paychecks. And I had to argue with my own family, being like, no, I don't mind paying away my paycheck, I enjoy my job. And they were like, no one should have to chase a paycheck. If you have to chase your paycheck, or anything that someone legally owes you, obviously you get it, then never work with them again. Never, ever, ever, ever. But I just, I just blinded by, Complete another desperation and be like, well, I enjoy the job and, you know, I might not be able to get a job like this again and da da da. You know, it's that whole area. Um, and it just, it also just makes you feel really stupid afterwards as well because you, you don't see all of these horrible things these people are doing while it's happening in front of you. And, you know, you've got bills to pay and rents to pay. So it's not that you can just suddenly turn around and go, I'm just quitting, I'm leaving. Um, I, I wish I could. I wish I did have that, that freedom to do that. But uh, it's just not, unfortunately, it's just not that it's not that easy, or at least it wasn't that easy for me. Um, so it all basically just, just reinforced this, this disdain I had for suits. And I only used suits because it was the easiest way for me to, to well, generalise, to be perfectly honest. Um, it was it, because was it, it just represented this idea of stability and success and da 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 da. But I always wanted to say, well, at what cost? Who's made the sacrifices for your stability and success, really? Because you, even my boss claimed that he made sacrifices, but he was also forcing, uh, like, I remember there was uh, single mothers with two kids um, into even more poverty because he refused, he basically out and out refused to pay them. You know, and he's the one saying, oh, I'm making sacrifices and die. it's my neck on the line at the end of the day. And it's like, you don't, you genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. Like, how can you honestly say that, really? How, how? I don't get it. And I don't know whether he was literally lying to all of us, playing us all for the fool, um, himself, by trying to act like he, you know, really was making all the sacrifices and all the difficult decisions, when all he was doing was kind of acting, um, no, sorry, I, I don't know whether he was acting or whether he was genuinely so blinded by his own narcissism and sociopathy, if that's the right word to use, that uh, he did actually fail to realise that he was, he was fucking everyone over. And he probably was aware, he probably was. I want to believe that he was, because of how calculated he did, what he was and everything that he did. Um, I, wanna, I actually do want to believe that, I really do. Um, I've just realised something, I'm not supposed to be here. Um, right. 
Okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that then. That's fine. I'm actually not supposed to be here. I've gone the wrong way. Because what I've been instructed to do is take on the celestial emissary first and um, ebria, ebrietas, ebrietas, ebriatas. I don't know how to say it. It's that. So yeah, I don't I don't know. Hmm. Um. So I'll have to go and uh, take on the celestial emissary. Is that not going to take ages? Is it? I have this feeling that it will. I'm going to the upper cathedral. That is... I swear that is it. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be too bad. I've got the upper cathedral key now. So I should just be able to rock on up there. And, um... And it should be fine. Fingers across. Right, let's see, let's see. Right, so... No, not here. I want to go... Yes, I want to go here. And then I take on the Celestial Emissary, um, which I think is actually, again, going to be a little bit more complicated than I'm learning on. I don't, I don't know, hopefully. Hang on a minute! Have I not taken on... Oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. So apparently, that, this is the order. This is what trips me out. This is the order it's supposed to be in. For some reason in my head, Ebriatus was supposed to be last. I don't, know, I don't know why I got the impression that Ebriatus is the last boss. But it feels like it is. But it's absolutely not. It's not even close. Because obviously there's Gerdeman, who uh, is kind of not the last boss either. And the Moon Presence we have to take on as well. So I, 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 I got confused. And also I haven't taken on uh, the Wet Nurse. I haven't taken on the, the Cage Head. I haven't taken on the other thing. Oh, the One Reborn. Mm. So there's plenty of work for me to do here, guys. Plenty for me to do. Okay, so up the elevator. Okay, here we go. Now, I should also, I mean, I also need a key to the orphanage. Um, but I'm pretty sure I actually get that. Oh, shit it. Dan, what are you doing? Darkin! Yeah, I didn't blame on me. That's Darkin's fault. That's all Darkin. It's nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with that whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Good. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. No, 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 no. This isn't how this is supposed to go at all. There we go. Right. And then you, Mr. Gunman. Yep, cool. And then you. Yep, cool. And then you. Have I not been here already? No. I thought I'd been here before. Hmm. This is interesting. There we go. Thank you. I have been. No, I haven't. Well, obviously I haven't because the fucking chest isn't open. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I. I I never got it. I never got it. It was so. It was so odd. Um, uh, frustrating as well, and it's extremely demotivating. It, it can really bring you down when you put your effort into something and someone, especially when you cared about the job. Because it turned out, like I did care about the job. I wanted to make it better because my role was actually to make the company better. Um, and one of the big problems we had, understandably, because of my fucking boss, was that people hated our company. They really did. The people who bought into it were not the people who hated the company um, because they had never bought into the company before. So they were, all the buyers were new buyers. They were never re like return buyers. Um, and, uh, and so we were getting sales, but just they, they dipped because obviously everyone hated us and they would, they would write terrible things about us. And I was in my position, I was asked, like, Dan, we need to get this sorted out. How do we stop it? And one of the things we had to do, had to do to stop people complaining was to change the way that we operated the business. But the way that the business operated was in perfect tune with my boss's method of acquiring as much money as possible. So it was never gonna change and it never did. The solution was clear, everyone agreed on the solutions that we came up with, but they never came to fruition because they, they basically counter um, they countered what our boss wanted to achieve, which, to, which was to earn as much money as possible. Now, obviously you think, of course, you want to earn as much money as possible because it's a business. And I know business needs, needs to make money. There's always a line where you kind of got to go, yeah, but you can't do that. Otherwise, you might as well just start a business, take a load of payments from everyone, claiming a service is going to be delivered within three weeks, and then never deliver the service, which was pretty much what happened. Um, pretty much. That's, that's basically what the model of the business was. Um, so, oh god, oh no, this is bad, this is very bad. Let's just heal up. I need to get to that lantern. Oh, don't throw those things at me, you prick. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Um, yeah, that's basically what he did. 
and everyone hated it. That's the thing. Everyone, everyone hated it. But he was also very good at kind of bringing people on side. So he was very good at motivating you. He would have been an excellent salesman. Like the funny thing is, I reckon if he'd have started a business advising people on sales or was like a motivational speaker around America, he'd fucking make millions without a shadow of a doubt. He would have done. But excuse me, he would rather do this, which was prey on the poor. <laughs> and the naive and the ignorant and the weak which is uh, you know what what um what we all were at the end of the day it's ultimately it you know because we had that faith actually no i guess it's not fair it's not fair to say that because everything else seemed kosher he made everything seem real set and like you know this is it and this is how it works and this is all very this is all very fine he did make it genuinely seem like this is all very in line with law and we're okay um so actually i think i think it would have taken a lot and the only time one person left because she didn't like it was because she was unable to make target on her sales, which actually was because we had so many people complaining about it. So she literally was like, I'm not making target, so I'm out. And, um, you know, I applauded her for that. There was a lot of other people kind of stuck around, um, primarily maybe because they enjoyed the job and whatever. Um, but no, it was, it was an awful place, actually. It was a terrible place to work because, because of the fact that, you know, if you, if you uh, say, run a convenience store, and sales are hurting, right? Because you never order more stock in, but or your boss doesn't order in more stock, right? Whereas you know that you probably be able to make more sales because people are telling you, people are out and out telling you, we would buy stock from you if you sold it, if you had it to sell. Whereas your boss is like, no, but selling, like buying stock costs money, so why would we buy more stock? Like, why would we do that? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I want to keep money. I don't want to bloody spend it. Oh, what are you doing? But you're there like, yeah, but they're telling you they'll buy more stock if you buy it in. And he's like, no, because that's not, that doesn't work with my profit margins right now. And you're working for this guy and that's, that's the kind of person you have to work with. It's that fucking frustrating because everyone around you is saying the same thing. Buy more fucking stock. That's the answer to your problem. That's what you need to do. Buy more fucking stock. But what's he doing? He's like, no, 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 because, no, because that, that, no. Nah. Because it just doesn't work with what I, you know, it doesn't work with my profits. It won't work. And then it turns out that they never intended buying stock. It's, oh. Oh. Oh, that's supposed to, is that my message? That might be mine. I think that's mine. Yeah, it's mine. That's my message. Woo! Because I can't uh, up, up or down vote it. Right. There we go. Um, no, it's just that frustrating. And then, of course, you find out he was never planning on buying, uh, changing anything anyway. And, um, yeah. What made it worse, actually? I don't know if it's fair for me to say, but I don't know if it'll get him. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't care, actually, because fuck him. Um, but it also turned out that, um, well, no, it didn't turn out. He told everyone that the company had been sold because it was doing so well. So everyone believed that it was going to be sold. It turned out, no, it was actually going into liquidation. So... That, that in itself was like, why couldn't you just say it was going into liquidation? Because no one would have been surprised by that based on the way everything was going. No one would have been like, oh, wow, I never saw that coming. No one. Everyone, everyone knew that the company was failing because the salespeople could see because of the number of phone calls that were not coming in. Um, I could tell because of the, um, the environment of customers like, that I had to deal with and stuff like that. And, and in terms of the communications between our partners and... Just the general atmosphere of everyone that worked for us. You could tell things weren't going quite to plan. Um, so if, no one would have been surprised, but for some reason he still felt it necessary to tell a lie, such as, oh yeah, we sold the company. Mm, no, no. And, and actually, you know, we, uh, I think I was willing to believe it, which I feel stupid about, because there were other people who were like, he didn't sell shit, because who the fuck would buy this company? Um, and my, my argument was like, well, you know, some people find value where others don't see it. Um, you know, maybe they do see something in it. Because we did have, we did have a large customer base and we did have uh, some popular products that we were running and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, maybe. But no, 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 no. We were, we were losing money fast. So, so there was that as well. And it all, just, all of it just fed into my, my horrible notion, my whole preconception of the idea that, yeah, like when... when when, 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 you, when you hold money at such high resolve, at such high value, everything else goes out of the pan. And it's dangerous, not to that person, maybe to that person, but to everyone around them. 
and it just puts up to me now it's put up this just huge barrier of like really what what are your goals what are your honest goals like i used to ask people this question like if um if you if you were given 10 million pounds tomorrow what would you do and they'd ask the question oh i start business i always i just kind of thought eh, for one that's so boring because to me it tells me that you've not had any any real vision on on that dream you've not really had any uh, the genuine thoughts about it. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily start a business, but I've already considered the prospect of if I was given that money and starting a business was um, what I did. Then what kind of fucking business would I run? You know, uh, what would it be? And obviously, I think. Well, obviously, I'd invest in a fucking channel. I'd buy a bloody new computer for start. I'd basically quit my job and I would give the best chance I could to this. You know, I invest all my time and energy into this. This is what I would do. Um, but just saying start business, just uh, it's kind of like, oh, oh, okay, meh. <laughs> uh, it's, it just doesn't, it doesn't give me any inspiration. It just kind of goes, uh, I've just been given a lot of money, I, I don't know. Like they've almost kind of um, thought of the, the best answer they can give, the smartest answer they can give. Without much, um, without much thought. I, I want to think about it as well. To be fair, you know, you give it some thought. I don't know. It just, it just the whole thing just kind of makes you think. Oh, I don't. It's a bit of a boring question. Um, a bit, a bit of a boring answer. Sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't make me feel like there was much that went into that. To be, to be perfectly honest. And it just kind of tells me that's what it does. It tells me that when you've got that much money, you don't want to do anything. You've lost all motivation for anything. You've lost. Uh, you've lost the kind of will to, to be. Um, what the fuck? Where do I go? I don't know where to go. I need to find the fucking place. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, no, it doesn't, it doesn't really sit well with me, you know. Obviously, obviously we need money, but I just think money's just a tool for you to achieve your, your goals and your wishes, so long as those goals and wishes are not simply money. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't, sit with me, it doesn't compute in my head, it doesn't make any sense, to be honest. Where the fuck am I supposed to go? Oh, wait a minute. No, am I lost? Yes, hang on a minute. There was a way, there was a ladder, and I need to find it again. And it always, it always, it always pisses me off, really. Because um, there's a, a <laughs> there are those people as well, and actually this was my boss. And I fucking hated it. It was so cringeworthy. This was my boss. There were those people online who you see posting bullshit about how great their life is, like wearing nice suits, and they're like, "Oh yeah, just driving, driving a fancy Mercedes today. Yeah, check me out. Uh, so successful." And you just kind of, "Oh fuck off." No, yeah. It may be okay. Like, well done. You know, congratulations. You are successful. But if if you're doing this to kind of demonstrate it to all of us. Then you know it's, I, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit wet to me, especially when it's actually bullshit as well. It's like a rental car or something. So again, my boss did this. He he was claiming he bought this really big house and he he owned it and stuff. Turns out he wasn't. He was renting. He genuinely was renting. And he was a guy who posts all these really horrendous status updates about haters. Literally, he would use the word haters and um, and how <laughs> how big his dreams were and how you know such a success he was. And it turns out his life was rental. He lived a rental life. And, you know, it'd be fine if you were genuinely that successful. I'd kind of be like, fair play, you know, you've actually done it, well done. Um, although I still, I still would be a bit like, okay, mate, you know, it's not necessary. I, I don't care. Maybe, maybe if you told that story to people who match your values in life, fine. But I'll be happy for you so much in the way that you've achieved a goal. Like, well done. But if you're trying to act like you've achieved a goal, like me going, yeah, I'm a big YouTuber. That's why I can't do it. Like, I can't go around going, I am a YouTuber because... It, it kind of goes, yeah, I make new videos on YouTube, which is usually the term I use. But I don't, I don't want to call myself a YouTuber as such. I do on my Twitter account, but I, I, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> because I'm like, well, I'm not really. I don't know where, when you cross that line or when you pass that level where you can say it. But I don't feel like it's there yet because I don't have... I don't feel like I have the following, like, of the guys who watch, of you guys who are watching, like, I love you guys to bits, and it, I know that basically if I get more viewers, it only becomes, um, enhanced, 
you know, the viewership and the idea that all the views going up and stuff, it only becomes better from there. But from here, I'm just like, I don't call myself a YouTuber. No, like, does a person... <laughs> does a person with two pence call themselves wealthy? They might do, being like, I'm wealthy in terms of my family and my substance of my life, fine. But they're not wealthy like they could go out tomorrow and buy themselves Kobe beef. <laughs> Not, they're not that kind of wealthy, so, yeah, not sure about that. <laughs> and I just find that that's, that's why I just kind of go, ah. And it's all, it just seems to be more popular around money. It always seems to be this area of, like, I'm rich. Yeah. Although, actually, no, I'm seeing it more with intelligence now. Intelligence is another one, because I think the value of being smart has gone up um, a great deal. Um, which is great, but unfortunately, what it also means is that there is a misunderstanding of perhaps what it means to be smart. Um, I, don't, I don't think I can, I don't think I can necessarily put it into a definition. I have my own version of what I think it means to be smart, um, which is basically I think that a fact is a fact certainly, but I still believe that, um, that there are things that should always be questioned, um, no matter how solid, because it adds perspective, and perspective to me is perhaps a, um, an area of maybe being socially smart. Um, and it also, you know, it does make to not become stubborn or self-righteous or arrogant, let's say, and thus becoming a person who feels like they don't need to learn anything, which is an element of being stupid, I guess, where you feel like you, you, you don't need to learn anything, which I guess, is, you know, is the ignorance of intelligence, which is not, not smart. So I guess, you know, smart is uh, used as a... I, I guess I define smart by using the polar of being smart. I don't even know if that in itself is a smart thing to do. I don't know. But then, <laughs> I basically, I try, I try to keep open-minded about things. Because, yeah, people want, to, people want to act like because they've read something on uh, the internet that they know a fact. Thus, they have become smart. Again, it's kind of like, is that really what it is? I don't think so. No, it takes a little bit more. You can't just read an article and go, I'm a master at that. I know all about that. No, you may be able to go, I read somewhere, or I heard once. You know, what's your perspective? How do you feel about it? Maybe ponder over what the other perspectives of it are. But you cannot possibly go, oh, I read an article that um, uh, we, we, uh, we grow because we eat broccoli. So that must mean that broccoli makes us grow. I mean, if you don't eat broccoli, you're going to be short for the rest of your life. Because that's that. You know, that's it. <laughs> doesn't no, doesn't work right. Anyway, that's the end of that episode. We've done the uh, uh, celestial mystery, and I guess you know what's coming next, unless you don't. In which case, look forward to it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more, of course, you know what to do. Take it easy. Bye bye. <laughs>